My name is Guy Kestevan and I've been a professional mountain bike tester for nearly 25 years and today I'm finally testing a bike that you've been asking me for a review on for ages. On one's classic super value alloy framed all round a trail hardtail, the Scandal. Obviously the big thing about the Scandal is the alloy frame which immediately makes it a lot lighter than the big dog, the steel framed equivalent, and also the Vandal, the tie bike. But it's not crazy light, the frame set still comes in around two kilos for medium, but it's not just the lower weight. You can immediately feel there's more stiffness and pep in this frame. It's much more eager, kind of flick about and pop. It's just a tighter, sharper ride, more precise through both, at both ends. And even though, you know, alloy definitely has a firmer feel, as you hope than steel or tie, that triple button max wall tube set certainly doesn't feel that abusive. And with space for a 2.6 inch rear tyre in here, if you want it, there's loads of potential to make it even more pneumatically protected than it is at the moment. You know, literally, Every gear change, every kind of move you make on this bike, it definitely kind of feels sharper and brighter. So you're really getting a reward for every bit of effort you put into it on climbs or just popping it out of corners. And at 13.1 kilos in this large, it's a pretty impressive weight as well. And obviously, you're probably going to want to drop a post. It's going to add some weight, but still, definitely pretty agile for the price. And you know, way under anything you're going to get full suspension wise. And the handling feels equally bright and responsive too. I mean, I was working on the magazines with Brandt to kind of put the whole template together for the current handling pack on the uh, on one bikes. And we were playing around with super short stems really early back then in the mid 90s and on one of the one of the first brands when he went on to set that, that up one of the first brands to use really short stems for a super agile steering feel so you've got a you know 35 is standard on this bike and then these big 780 mil bars for leverage and the head angles relatively slack 65 degrees so you know, it's pretty confident but with just a 460 mil reach, it's kind of mid-length, and it just feels really responsive. And but you know, the flop, Rockshot's 35 fork up there, rather than the Reba 32 mils or Recons you'll get on most bikes at this price, means it's still impressively accurate for hitting those tighter, more technical lines. And with 130 mil of travel in the fork and that big tire potential up front. <laughs> 7, 8 mil bars have their limits. You can create a bike that's properly happy to push on through rootier or rougher sections if you want to. But it's not so long fought that the geometry is going to be all over the place in technical sections. So you've still got that precision when you need it working through rooty gaffy pieces like this and while you know these aren't production spec tyres these Contis I've got on you can change the build in terms of tyres in terms of bar stem length and other features when you get your ordering because all the bikes are made to order in Rotherham so there might be a bit of a wait get your bike built up but if you tick the right boxes it'll come exactly how you want it and I think current bikes they don't have the Shimano wheel set they have a much wider rim wheel set and they have even smoother feeling Victoria tyres but anyway just check exactly what you're buying before you press the support trigger because you know specs can vary on Planet X bikes, 
depending on what they've got in stock. Because what they do is they shop around the best value components they can find for you and build the bikes accordingly. So it's definitely always worth signing up for the Planet X newsletter as well, just to see what the best prices are on any bike at any given moment. So what you've got is a properly peppy, responsive and well sorted all round the trail out of tail at an absolute bargain price, which is kind of what the scandals always stood for. And this has been properly modernised with the fork and geometry, but without it becoming too sort of enduro styly. Because obviously, you know, you've got Hello Dave if you want something crazy slack. But where this comes into its own is just chasing around between the trees under power like I'm doing now. Or heading out into the hills for a proper long epic because this is more than light and efficient and fast rolling enough to put in a proper epic day out. Yet another quality bargain from the lads in Rotherham. So while we're some, somewhere picturesque, I'm just going to walk you through some of the features on the bike. Starting up front, 30, RockShox 35 fork. Uh, that's a real steal at this price. You know, much bigger uh, stanchion tubes than you normally get at this price, uh, which means a much stiffer, much more controlled fork. It's 130 mil travel. Uh, you've got motion control damping on there and you've got a 15 mil th through axle on the bottom as well. I mean, as you can see, it's the old school style Maxil and they're plastic adjusters on top, you know, it is a budget fork in terms of uh, fixtures, but in terms of performance, it's right, you know, it's the same chassis diameter as a Pike. You know, it's properly accurate and surprisingly well damped fork as well. And you've got adjustable air pressure in that spring on the far side. So rebound on the bottom, rebound damping as well. So, you know, fully adjustable for rider weight and different rider attitudes. Uh, it's a 51 mil offset, you know, it's, to be fair, it's actually all right. And you've got a super short stem and then 780 mil bars to add plenty of control on top. So, although personally I prefer a uh, shorter offset fork, it hasn't been a big issue for me while I've been riding this. Uh, the brakes aren't quite to spec. On current spec, they're a Guide R. It sh uh, currently has the Guide RE, which is, uh, you know, that same lever, but paired with the uh, code caliper down the bottom, the big downhill caliper. So even more power. But even if it comes with these uh, Guide R, uh, 180 mil uh, front and 160 rear means you know there's plenty of power on there for what is a lightweight trail hardtail. Like I say, reach is 460 mil on this large, and it's a 460 mil seat as well. Rear end is 438 mil, but as you can see, this uh, forged plate in there uh, means there's tons of tire room in there, and there's no uh, bridge on these relatively chunky stays either. So uh, masses of tire room. I mean that's a 2.4 but it'll take a 2.6, no problem. Uh, classic English bike frame design touch there. Uh, the clamp slots are at the side. So, you know, all the mud coming off the back wheel isn't going down into your frame. Uh, it's got a really neat little seat collar there with a replaceable bolt receiver. And as you'd hope, it's a uh, threaded bottom bracket. So no ISCG mount tabs on there. It's actually got internal cable routing and you've got room for one bottle cage there. There's a fair old kink in the seat tube, but there's still enough straight length there to uh, get this fixed post slammed. And if you look at some of the spec options, you may be able to fit a dropper post shortly as well. Uh, like I say, all Planet X bikes are built uh, down in Rotherham when you put your order in. So check exactly the bike you're buying when you buy it. And also look out for any deals that are coming through. Uh, because you know the spec does change on a fairly regular basis for example this wheel pack and this tire setup isn't what is currently available on the production bikes uh, but you know they do do a gx build so full sram gx and uh, sram gx rear mech so in production bikes will come with a sram eagle uh, cassette on there not the shimano one on there at the moment you know some of the spec options include a dropper post and you've got the uh, insertion point there for getting the cable in and then it'll just neatly pop back into the frame there. So again, even the uh, dropper post routing is semi-internal. You've got neat gussets up here on the head tube, on this short uh, 120 mil head tube, and another gusset in there just to add a bit more strength, and a third one underneath. So, you know, it's a 130 mil fork, but you know, this is a bike that can uh, 
take a reasonable amount of hammer. Uh, not the lightest alloy frame, like I say, it's a two kilo frame, but a really tough, really accurate and dependable alloy frame. And like I say, it's got a real brightness and sharpness through the pedals and even through the gear shifts compared to the steel and the titanium bikes. So obviously, if you want in a more comfortable ride, go for those tie bikes or the steel bike, uh, but you're gonna have a heavier ride as a result. And to be fair, this triple butted max wall tubing is for an alloy bike, I'd say, you know, it's acceptably comfortable. It's not crazy smooth. Uh, you know, there are smoother alloy bikes out there, but for a tough hardtail that can take a beating and is designed to take a beating, it doesn't give you too much of a beating in return. Uh, other features on here that uh, you might want to swap around. I'm not a big fan of grips with a uh, hard clamp on the outside edge. But again, all things that you can swap uh, when you order the bike. And grips aren't massively expensive, even if you do decide you don't like those. Oh, a final bit of geometry I haven't talked about. Uh, bottom bracket height, 320 mil. So, you know, perfectly acceptable, reasonably low, but not so low you're going to be tapping your pedals all the time. It's just a good balanced all-rounder, and that's exactly how it rides. And to be fair, it's what a lot of trail bike riders want. They don't want, you know, the front end wang far out in front like it feels like they're chasing a wheelbarrow and it, you know and it's long enough that you've still got plenty of space and you know decent stability when you are going at speed and like i say you know alloy frame does save you a lot of weight over the big dog actually something like a kilo lighter uh, than the steel frame bike even although that does have the dropper post as standard and this bike in a large comes in at 13.1 kilos without the pedals on it is 29er front and rear i don't know if i've mentioned that so you know you've naturally got a smoother faster rolling bike anyway and i have to say under power this thing properly flies you know it's got a really crisp easy efficient rolling feel and it pops up through those gears really really quickly you know of course there's simple ways to uh, get it even lighter and smoother as well you know just by turning it tubeless so thanks very much to planet x for sending me the bike and supporting this video uh, as you'll have probably noticed if you're a subscriber already uh, i'm working my way through the whole planet x and on one and titus titanium ranges while you're here, if you like what I'm doing, please consider supporting uh, my Patreon subscribers who uh, give a small monthly uh, contribution towards the site and they get behind the scenes, extended edits, uh, exclusive edits and a kind of higher level of sort of customer feedback in terms of buying advice, tech advice, things like that. So if you like what I'm doing with the channel, please consider joining those guys. But for now, I've been Guy Kestevan on Guy Kest TV or tech talking and live ride reviewing the latest on one scandal. Alloy framed, super affordable, Trail 29er.